Are you ready for a quick journey around the world? Uh, in this video, I'm going to provide a very brief overview of non-European art. Non-European or non-Western art is referring to artwork created outside of the European tradition. So art from India, China, Japan, Africa, and art from the Pacific and the ancient Americas. These cultures have long and complex histories. And I know that as a cultural outsider, I cannot unpack the richness of these traditions, uh, especially in a short overview. Nevertheless, this video will provide a scope of the range that exists in this incredible art of these incredibly diverse cultures. Okay, so we're going to start out with India. And, and although art in India is diverse, you do see a lot of unified expressions from within. And a monument is often thought of as a single entity involving painting, sculpture, and architecture. Buddhist and Hindu philosophies inspire much of the artwork from India. Uh, these are belief systems that, that use meditation to reach spiritual enlightenment. In early Indian art, you see many depictions of the Buddha, who is typically shown in a meditative state with his mudras or hand symbols depicting his inner thoughts. Hindu art features a variety of gods, with their god Shiva being the most prominent. Hindu and Buddhist art often piles forms together in these crowded compositions. Looking at architecture, both, both Buddhist and Hindu temples are, are mound shape. Buddhists use these kind of large, solid hemispheres, while Hindu temples are like these sculpted mountains uh, with these small interiors. So that's the kind of art you see in the history of India. Now, moving on to China. In China, you see quite a bit of diversity within the art, largely because China had been in contact with so many other cultures through, through their trade on the Great Silk Road. Chinese philosophies of, of Taoism and Confucianism were very influential and certainly underlie the artistic expressions of this region. Chinese art often emphasize the, the relatedness of the parts, and this idea can be seen in their courtyard style homes as well as the monumental constructions like the Forbidden City. Their painting also emphasizes the relationship of the forms and popular painting formats include things like hand scrolls, hanging scrolls, fans, and album leaves. Now, of all the art forms, calligraphy is the most respected in China, uh, and they are certainly proud of this rich and long-standing tradition. Uh, in general, Chinese art has this proclivity toward the, the monumental and, and grand. And, and you see this in the colossal Buddhas, the, the tomb of Shirwangdi, and of course, you know, the Great Wall of China. <laughs> but, but their affinity for the grandiose does not take away from the, the detail and precision given to small items like porcelain or finely cut jade figures okay so so the art from China is very rich and very diverse indeed all right so as we look on to the art of Japan we can see artistic preferences displayed early on in their history uh, looking at the Haniwa earthenware you can see that there is a, an honesty in their approach uh, and they embrace the, the natural qualities of the materials that the forms are, are made with. And this approach can actually be seen in their architecture as well. The, the Japanese are known for being sensitive to the properties of wood and, and wood construction. In fact, their earliest buildings made use of untreated wood and show an emphasis on harmonizing the buildings with the surrounding natural environment. Uh, these ideas greatly influenced modern architects like, like Frank Lloyd Wright. 
Japanese architects viewed their architecture as being a part of an overall balance in nature. And this demonstrates how they were inspired by Zen Buddhism, a meditative and an introspective philosophy. Japanese art is most noted for its printmaking tradition, specifically its development of the, the woodcut process called Akinoe prints, which uh, depicted scenes of Japanese kind of daily life. The, these were then made available to, to the masses. The composition, subject matter, and style of these prints was deeply influential on 19th century European art movements like uh, Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. Looking over to Africa, you, you see that in African cultures, art is an integral part of life uh, and is fundamental to the pursuits of the entire community. Uh, a lot of African art is centered around the spirit world and the role of ancestors. African art is not merely decorative, it's functional and spiritual, and the works are often believed to be infused with symbolic powers. African art is noted for its geometric emphasis and its production of carved masks, particularly in wood, uh, but also in metal. Costume dancers would, would wear these masks in ceremonies and then act out the, the power of the spirits that they represent. African art was very influential on artists like Pablo Picasso in the 20th century. When considering the art created by oceanic peoples uh, living in various islands of the Pacific, perhaps the, the giant stone carvings of the Easter Island come to mind. These head sculptures are truly remarkable, especially when you see them in the landscape. But you know, they're a bit of an anomaly when it comes to the art of the, the Pacific. Um, in fact, most art found in this region is portable and made of wood and used in, in ceremonies. And so you see this, you also see a lot of intricately woven fabrics made from natural materials like this tapa and you see here and of course the Pacific is also known for its incredible body and tattoo art. When looking at the art of the Americas, it can be a little difficult to summarize the complexity of these ancient civilizations. The, the people groups that fit into this camp include the Olmec, the people of Teotihuacan, the Mayans, uh, the Anisazis, uh, the Aztecs, Incans, um, and the Native Americans. Uh, and when considering the art produced in this region of the world, we, we see that some societies were, were nomadic and produced portable works for ceremonial uses, while, while others were able to establish great cities um, with ceremonial centers. But, but in general, art created in the ancient Americas show how these people groups embrace the, the materials of their regions. The, the Native Americans, you know, they, they had a rich forest lands. And so in their art, they created these, these large totem poles to, to symbolize the, the spirit of the tree, as well as the spirit of their gods. While people living in drier regions made use of their materials as well. And you can see this in these earthenware vessels from Peru and the use of adobe construction in the southwest desert. So as you can see, there is a myriad of artistic expressions outside the European tradition that proclaim the diversity of our world and the rich cultures of its inhabitants. And by studying arts from these various regions, we can see how communities came together and used art as a powerful force to express ideas and concerns that were of utmost significance. Thanks for your attention. Uh, we'll see you next time.